Coming up next on CBS Sports, the NCAA Basketball Championship. It's Gary Parrish. Welcome back. CBS Sports Eye on College Basketball Podcast, where we sometimes discuss camel fighting, dodo birds, leaky black. Eye on College Basketball Podcast is presented by Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's, sub above. Matt Norland is here with me. If you're watching on YouTube, you know who you are. Brandon Davies, smash it. You have consent. And uh, if you haven't already done it already, please subscribe to the CBS Sports College Basketball YouTube channel while you're here. Let's get into it. And before we dive into the bracket and break down every region region uh, game by possible game, we got a, a big headline in college basketball on Tuesday night. Kansas coach Bill Self, he announced that Kevin McCullough is done for the season. That is the Jayhawks' leading scorer. He's been KU's best player. He's been hobbled by a bone bruise in his knee for more than a month. Missed five games in the regular season. Missed the Big 12 tournament. Bill Self had previously said that he believed Kevin McCullough would be available and as healthy as he's been in a long time for the NCAA tournament. But last night, Bill Self met with the media, and here's what he said. Okay. Uh, Hunt looks great. You know, he's practiced basically every day since uh, Saturday, uh, uh, non-contact, and then, and, then, and then the last two days he's been full contact. Kevin's not going to play. Kevin uh, says his knee pain has not subsided any, and it's too bad for him to be able to contribute. So uh, uh, Kevin will not play. How tough is that to watch a kid that has given so hard and comes back for another year not be able to do so, yeah. at least for the first round? No, he's out. He's, he, he, we're, we're shutting him down for the tournament. So uh, uh, if we're if we're fortunate enough to win two games, we would have done it without him. And 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 uh, you know he hadn't practiced in six weeks, uh, 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 basically. And so uh, yeah, he he it would he hasn't done more damage to his knee, but but uh, he tried to he tried to do it and said that he just couldn't go. Deadleg, your thoughts? Yeah. Um... No, <laughs> what, what was crazy is that Bill Self said he would be playing for the tournament. Just like uh, Shaka Smart said, Tyler Kolick will be playing, and Tyler Kolick is on pace to play here. Um, that is damaging. I had Sanford over Kansas before we got to this. Uh, it is a bummer. You got to believe that he really must be going through something so painful to not. McCuller doesn't have eligibility left. Like, this is the end of his college career. I'm 99% sure. The chat wants to correct me in real time. I'm almost positive this was his bonus COVID year. Um, and he is a viable NBA prospect, but for him not to be able to, to play in the tournament, that's, that's a tough scene. And yeah, I, I know the line moved a little bit as well. Uh, he's the best player. I mean, Dickinson, probably the best offensive player, but McCullough's the leading scorer, definitely the best all around player. And that hinders Kansas. This is now the second straight season. They win the title in 22 last year, you know, self had heart issues, had to, had to go underneath a, a medical procedure. He didn't even coach. Uh, in the postseason, and uh, that impacted Kansas's ability to make the second weekend. Now they have a huge injury like this. I won't say they can't get out of the first weekend because it is Bill Self. We've seen stranger things in this amazing tournament, but um, very, very much seeming like a long shot here after all the issues with Kansas and its lack of depth. I noticed you hit the liar button. Are you calling Bill Self a liar? He did say that he was expected to play in the tournament like five days ago. So Do you think that's a lie? Sometimes people just say things that aren't, aren't right. Like, I plan to leave for the airport today at 3 o'clock. I might not leave till 3.30. Doesn't mean I'm lying. Why not? I just might be running behind. Okay. Doesn't mean I'm lying. I could just, like, you know, no, things could it was, change. It was a... Uh, it was a uh, just a, a kidding button here early in the podcast, trying to lighten, trying to lighten the mood after some bummer news. No, no, I know. I, I, I know you, but, like, there are people out there who think Bill Self was lying to trick the committee to ensure Kansas could get uh, a better seed than it would have gotten, theoretically, if you would have said, I don't know if Kevin McCullough is going to be available. There are legitimate people who think Bill Self misled the committee. Do you believe that? No, I don't. I think in his heart of hearts, he actually expected McCullough to be able to go and thinking because he had actually returned after Self said earlier this this season that we don't know. We hope to get Kevin back before the end of the season. Remember that happened? And then he wanted to, did he did return like less than a week later. And... Here we are. They're, they're, I, down to, they're down to a. We're going to see if a team can win with a four man lineup, GP. I watched that video of Bill Sell, and I do not see a man who was lying a week ago. I see a man who is incredibly frustrated. Think about the words he used here. 
Look, you can tell a lot by how somebody says something. Did you catch the words? Kevin says his knee pain has not subsided any, and it's too bad for him to contribute. He tried to do it and said he couldn't go. Bill Self didn't say, Kevin's too hurt, can't go. Man, Kevin, you have no idea what kind of pain he is. I talked to Shaka Smart a couple nights ago. You know what he said? When we talked to Tyler Kolick, he was hurting to breathe. Like, you, you have no idea how – he's a tough guy. And for him to be hurting to breathe, we know it's serious. Bill Self didn't say anything like that. Kevin says his knee pain has not subsided. Kevin tried to do it, and he said he couldn't go. It reminds me – Nobody else will remember this, but because I was covering the team. 2002, there was a Memphis team coached by John Calipari, ranked preseason number 12. They started 20-4. and four. They missed the NCAA tournament. They went 2-5 and five in their final seven games because one of their best players, Kelly Wise, got hurt. It's a team with three future NBA players. And I remember every time you'd ask John Calipari about Kelly Wise down the stretch, you know what he'd say? He said he can't play. He said he's too hurt. He said he can't play. Said he can't play. He says he's hurting. Said he can't play. It was always phrased that way. It wasn't like he's too hurt to play. It's unfortunate he can't go. It was he. We asked him. He says he can't play. So here we are. When? How do you go from a week ago actually thinking, if we take him at his word, and I do, that there's a good chance Kevin McCuller will feel better than he's ever felt in a month if he just sits out the Big 12 tournament to, and Bill couldn't wait to say this last night. You saw it, right? Oh, no, he's out for the tournament. We've ruled him out for the tournament. We're shutting him down for the tournament. Yeah. If you're not frustrated with the entire situation, don't you just say, we're, he's not ready to go right now, but we're going to keep working on him. We're going to keep getting training, and we're going to hope if we're lucky enough to win two games this week that he'll be ready for the Sweet 16. Why would, that's what they've been saying for six weeks is that, hey, we're, we're hoping he'll be ready to go next game, next week. And now they're just like, we're done with it. We're done with everything. I, 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 didn't, I don't think Bill Self was lying last week. I think Bill Self has reached a boiling point with this situation as of last night. Are you saying that Kevin McCullough Jr. isn't as hurt as he is le leading on? I have no idea how hurt Kevin McCullough is. I say, here's what I think. I don't think that coaching staff believes that he really cannot play ever again for the Kansas Jayhawks. Well, then that is, <laughs> then that is something. I mean, if that, and he has been hurt and played and not and then not returned. Okay, look, I, like I'm just listening to the words. I'm yeah. just listening to the to the words. Uh, this is a guy who played 32 minutes um, against Baylor like 18 days ago, and Bill Self in that quote last night said his knee has not gotten worse. He hasn't done anything to make it worse. So if he hasn't done anything to make it worse, just let's focus on the words. He played 32 minutes 18 days ago. Could have theoretically played in the Big 12 tournament. We were told it was just like, we just think it's smarter to hold him out, let him continue to heal. And now you reach a point where it's just he can't ever play again. It's done. He's shut down. It's over. You tell me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's, a major, it's a major development. But also, like in, in the context of everything, very few people picking Kansas to make the Final Four. Not many people picking Kansas to make the Elite Eight. This just could accelerate their timeline on exiting the tournament. And now you'll have El Marco Jackson, uh, presumably be the one that come, becomes the fifth starter. They, they adjust the lineup. And now you've got a guy who has not been as good as expected, former five-star prospect going up against a team that's just going to try and press your brains out. So that will be, uh, it makes the game all that much more compelling to watch for sure. When they go up against Sanford in Salt Lake city, um, I think that is Thursday night as we speak here, GP. Just want to make sure that's right. That is correct. Yeah, they're going to play Thursday in uh, in Salt Lake City. So, no McCuller. Kansas tries to go on without him. We'll see if Self and uh, and the Jayhawks can manage to get past a very, very wily 13 seed. And then they're either going to have a really good McNeese team waiting for him or uh, or Gonzaga, which will be trying to make a ninth straight sweet team. Let's move on to last night's action. The first four got underway in Dayton. The at-large teams were Virginia and Colorado State. It's exactly, exactly what I told you yesterday. What happened, happened. First four, we don't celebrate the winner. We just laugh at the loser. Oh, buddy, we were giggling like crazy last night. We'll talk Virginia basketball next. First, a word from our partners. Bracket season is here. Join the madness by playing the official bracket game of the NCAA. Get the CBS Sports app and be part of the madness. Virginia embarrassed itself last night in the first four. Final score was Colorado State 67, Virginia 42. 
I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, these dudes went scoreless, and I love this on True TV. They went score. I've never seen this in a basketball game before. <laughs> I've never seen this before. First Leave time it- since we flipped to March. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to True TV to give me something I ain't never seen before. Virginia went scoreless from 9.48 p.m. Eastern to 10.40 p.m. Eastern. 52 minutes. These dudes couldn't score points. They went 0 of 19 in that 52-minute stretch of basket. They 52-minute stretch of real time. They went 0 of 19. They had 14 points with 16.38 left in the second half. They went 52 minutes of real time without scoring. Do you realize if you have an erection as long oh my God. as long as if you have an erection as long as Virginia went last night without scoring, you need to consult a doctor. Do you understand that? Well, I want to give you a ton of credit because we are definitely not on CBS Sports Network right now. Past two shows have been. Hope people have been enjoying that on uh, on TV. And then we are giving you those uh, those TV shows in the pod feed. <laughs> but Paris, just waste no time getting my consult a doctor. Consult a doctor to the selection committee. On Virginia for the final time. Wrong, 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 wrong. What are we doing wrong, here? Wrong, okay. Wrong, wrong. No, 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 no. That was brutal, man. And I take no joy in seeing Virginia look that terrible. I want a good game. I want a good game. I want a better team in the field. I'm going to take and give me Indiana State. They were getting a lot of love. Oklahoma, I believe, was the first team out. St. John's Providence, by the way, lost to BC in the NIT. Good times. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, Tony Bennett is now gone five years without winning a tournament game. No, there was no tournament in 2020. Uh, this one was bad. Last year was a fluke ending against Furman. Really uh, just a lightning bolt of an ending there and, uh, and a great tournament moment. But, yeah, didn't have the offense. Colorado State avoids getting virginia And I don't know what else to say. It, they, they didn't belong in the field. They didn't look like they had belonged in the field. They've been asked lately, T-ball score, just breaking through the ceiling here. And they did nothing to dispel that notion on national TV last night. In, uh, in a game that didn't even come close to the entertaining value of Wagner versus Howard. Congrats to the Seahawks and Donald Copeland, Jay-Z fan, for moving on to Thursday. I have, uh, I have said in the past that anything that happens after Selection Sunday has no impact on what should have happened on Selection Sunday. So, like, if you see an eight seed go to the Final Four, it doesn't mean they were underseeded necessarily. It just means that sometimes stuff like that happens. I think this is the exception to that rule. This is one. I don't want to say everybody had them out because the stupid committee had them in. But like a lot of people stood up on Sunday and said, why is Virginia in this tournament? 18 spots lower than any other at-large team in the field at Ken Palm. 18 spots lower. Like you're looking and you're like, okay, there's this team. Look, where is the next one? Oh, Virginia, way down here. They're so far below every other at-large team. They went four and five in their previous nine games heading into the NCAA tournament. They couldn't correct 50 points in four of their previous eight games. Jerry Palm on Sunday, depressed as he could be because he missed two, just like me. You got to understand, this guy spends every day for five months trying to project a bracket. I spend seven minutes on Selection Sunday. We get the same thing. All right. Hold on. You're doing bracketology in your top 25 and one every day for three and a half months. Don't I just know. say you're boiling it down. And you're you're calling yourself what you're you're a boiler maker. You're coming for Paul's head. Just admit what's going on here. You're wait the boiler I, maker. He went to Purdue. You know what's going on. Wait till I grow my bangs out. Then it's over. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see that. Then it's over. And, it's hold over on, hold on. And we are on a time limit today, so we got to keep moving. I am begging anyone that listens to this show that has legit podcast skills to Photoshop Jerry Palm's bangs on Parrish's face. Send I, it to me, please. I, I'm, I'm, I'm already part boiler maker. I'm also part Aggie. That round of 32 match is going to break my heart, but I am part boiler maker. I'm, I'm, I'm a part time bracketologist. And if I get some bangs, it's over for Jerry Palm. That's where we're at. All right. But Jerry Palm, depressed as I've ever seen him on Selection Sunday. He was like, well, you know, I see. I guess you could see this. And then we got to Virginia. And you know what he, you know what he told Britt Stover, Adam Zucker, Keanu Martin, whoever he was talking to? You know what he said? I would have never had Virginia in this field. Often I can see it. I can go, well, yeah, I should have probably had that one. I would have never gotten to a point where I said, maybe I should put Virginia in this field. So when you have one of the biggest bracket projectors in the world saying there's, I could look at it for another week and I would never reach that conclusion. And then Virginia comes out and does what it did last night. That's an indictment of the committee. And I asked you yesterday on CBS sports network, has the shine come off this Virginia thing a little bit because it is true. It'll be March, 2025 and Tony Bennett 
at the best, is going to be looking for his first NCAA tournament win since since 2019. He beats Texas Tech in uh, – in, on April 8th, 2019, to win the national championship. And since then, we've had a canceled tournament in 2020, lost Ohio in the first round in 2021, missed the NCAA tournament in 2022, lost to Furman in the first round in 2023, got blasted by Colorado State in the first round in 2024. Can I ask you again, has the shine come off this thing a little bit? Uh, just a little bit. Um, yeah, if you look at the the – Tournaments before that, obviously, as well. Yeah, they're just a little. But you know what? If you're a Virginia fan, you're trading it anyway. Like, it sucks to live in the moment now, but you got a national championship. You were able to do it. Uh, you've had some really, really good years. Over the past decade, Tony Bennett, his win percentage and his dominance in the ACC uh, supersedes every single coach in that conference. So, yeah, it does stink. You did make the tournament, even if it was criticized and believed that shouldn't be the case by uh, the overwhelming majority. And you want to see where the program can pivot moving forward and not have to endure this anymore. But if I give you the option, okay, hey, listen, you can make three Final Fours and a pair of Sweet Sixteens, but not win a national championship, or you win a title and then you go five years, five out of six tournaments without winning a game. Virginia fans are taking the latter every single time. You want the national title, a little bit of a shine come off. We'll see how Tony Bennett adjusts moving forward in this NIL era, which you know he's not, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't hate, he just doesn't love. I've talked to him about this before. I talked about it with him last summer. Um, it's just, you know, it's, for him personally, I think it's uh, it's a little challenging to uh, to navigate. And that's, you know, not necessarily to his detriment. Uh, he's he's trying, but Virginia is also a hard school to get into. And I think that is a prime example of a high major program that was really uh, cooking in a lot of ways. And still in some ways, it's it's he's still getting into the tournament. They haven't fallen off. We're not talking about a 15-win team here. But on the biggest stage, they've fallen flat, so... Maybe a little bit for for a national audience, but for Virginia fans, you know, yeah, they're not happy, but they're taking the title every time. Yeah, and, um, you know, that was, and maybe what does this say about the ACC, and then we'll move on. Um, even if Virginia hasn't won an NCAA tournament game since 2019, you ready for this? Virginia has won two of the past four ACC regular season titles. Mm -hmm. So a team that has won two of the past four ACC regular season titles ain't won an NCAA tournament game since 2019. And a team that finished alone in third in the ACC standings this season just got blasted by 25 by a team that finished tied for six in the Mount West this season. You could take that for whatever it's worth. Just know that it's true. Let's move on. Oh, we almost to the good stuff now. We almost to the good stuff now. Let's go. We got the first four day one in the books. First four day two on tap. And then we're going to get to Thursday, that sweet part of the bracket. We'll pick every game and every hypothetical game. We'll do it next. First, another word from our partner. Let's go. It's time for the madness. And CBS Sports HQ has your wall-to-wall -wall NCAA tournament coverage. We got your game highlights, expert analysis, and insights all the way to the Final Four. Start and end your March Madness coverage with CBS Sports HQ. First half of the first four, done. Congrats to Wagner. Congrats to Colorado State. Double thumbs down, Virginia. Two more games tonight. Then on Thursday, we get the good stuff. Let's go. The bracket. The bracket. Two more games tonight, and then on Thursday, we get the good stuff. Come 64 on, teams playing 32 games in the Let's span go. of about 36 hours. First round of the 2024 NCAA tournament. It's nearly here. And now we're going to run you through our entire brackets, for better or worse. Dead leg, are you ready? I want to start with the East region where UConn is the number one seed. Take us through UConn Stetson. Take us all the way through the final of the East region. Yep. Then I'll do the same, and then we'll just Got keep it. doing this till we're done or run out of time. Either one. We are going to do it. Here we go. Crisp, clean bracket right here. You know your boys got you with tip times and channels, too. UConn, Stetson, oh, I'll be yeah. there in Brooklyn. I'll be there in Brooklyn. It's going to be approximately 245 on CBS on Friday. UConn's moving on. FAU Northwestern, that's going to be the 1215 Eastern CBS tip on Friday coming from Brooklyn. I will take FAU and the Owls to beat Northwestern. Um, there's a lot of people on FAU. I get a little bit wary with an 8-9 game with a lot of people siding on one versus the other, but I will go with the Owls to get their act together but if this game is close late, Boo Booey, he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't back down to anyone. I will say this, FAU, if you go and look over the past two years, 
when they have had to play teams from high major conferences, for the most part, beyond the tournament performances last year, they've actually fared pretty well. It's against the other teams where they've let their guard down a little bit. But I'll go with the Owls to move along. In Spokane, we've got San Diego State and UA, uh, Auburn versus Yale. Random note, the three teams in this tournament from Alabama are all going to Spokane. Um, pretty crazy. Uh, just that, you know, they're all fly. They have to fly a long distance. And they're all going to the same the same pod here. Uh, San Diego State UAB is a 145 tip on Friday. I will take the Aztecs. Our poll right now live is which 12 over five do you like most? Uh, I haven't seen the results yet. Nada, don't give them to me. I want to wait another like 10, 15 minutes or so. My guess is that UAB will be the least popular 12 over five, but I will go Aztecs there. And then I am going to Auburn has never lost a first round game under Bruce Pearl. It might as a program have never lost a first round game. Someone can fact check me that in real time. I think that's the stat, but I will go Yale here, which needed a uh, borderline miraculous ending against Brown to even get into this field. Yale is good. It is talented. It's got defensive capability and it's got Danny Wolf, who if he if he takes Janai Broom to school with this a hard shell Batman mask on. I mean, he and Kase Tominaga are, could be the two biggest stars of the first two days of the tournament here. I will go Yale. Again, you got to have a little bit of spice, a little zest in this bracket. So give me Yale. I know that's not a popular pick. Keep them going down. I've got BYU over to Kane in Omaha. That's a Thursday tip at 1240 on True TV. I don't expect a ton of push here, but congrats to T Keith Dambrot. You know, LeBron James will be locked in. If you haven't heard, he coached LeBron James in high school. What? what? Illinois what? plays Moorhead State following that game in Omaha on True TV. I uh, just... Preston Spradlin's a really good young coach. I think he will coach the high major level in the next, you know, four to seven years, if not sooner. He's good. He's not yet even 40. This one, they seem like they're very uh, outmatched. Give me Illinois to move on. Washington State, Drake. Got the coach's music bracket up, by the way. Drake's coach did not pick Drake. That's unfortunate. That's, that's a missed a lot of people opportunity. Pointed that out. A lot of people pointed that out. I know. I was wondering if that might be the case, but it, it wasn't. Were you disappointed by that? Darren DeVries didn't go Drake. Yeah, if you coach Drake, you either have to pick Drake or Meek Mill if you want to go opposite Drake. You have to pick Meek Mill. D did not did not Meek pick Millie. Did not pick did not pick Meek Mill. Um he picked Luke Combs, just so we're just so we're clear. Kyle Smith picking digital underground. As yeah, well, that, that's the one that like how did that happen? <laughs> Dude, incredible. When he gave that to me, I said, there's no, and hit number two is Prince for him. When he gave that to me, I said, your street cred is going to go through the roof. He said, I haven't listened to new music since the early nineties. So it's just, it's against, really by the way, I'm against people who don't listen to new music. You should, right. you should, you should listen. To I agree. Music. I agree. You should, you should listen to new music. Just whatever the big albums are, put them on, give them a shot. Um, Digital underground should only be the answer if somebody asks you, if you were ever drunk and at a karaoke bar, what might you do? And you go, maybe digital underground. That, that's the only way that should be the answer to a question. Amazing pick. And I the, I appreciate the, the story went absolutely nuts. Um, but we don't have enough time to get into this on this on this show. I am going to be on Dan Patrick's show talking about this. So if you want to seek that out after the pod's done, I'm literally transitioning right to that to talk about that. But Kyle Smith, digital underground incredible i was i'll have washington state moving on against drake but this was my toughest 710 i'll take wazoo and then i've got tj Otzelberger. um this is also true tv out of omaha moving on so i'll have uconn beating fau in brooklyn on sunday uh but an intriguing one uh one versus eight matchup there i'll have san diego state getting past yale which gives us a rematch of the national uh title game last season illinois over byu and a potential thriller Illinois moving on to the Sweet 16. And then you got to, there has not, we have had like, it's in my stats and facts and August story that's going to go up later today. And I got to finish doing that at some point today too. There has been like 17 straight tournaments or something like that, where we've had a one, at least one, one seed or two seed not make the Sweet 16. If your bracket has all ones and twos in the Sweet 16, change it. It's not going to happen. Someone's going to go down somewhere. I have Iowa State losing to Washington State. Cougars, Palouse, let's rock. So then I'll have UConn over San Diego State. If you're watching on YouTube, Nada's got my bracket up on hey, He's actually picking it through in real time. Hey. This is good producing. Here you hey, go. YouTube. I will have UConn over the Aztecs. I will take Illinois over Washington State. UConn, Illinois, I would be there. This is going to be in, in Boston. I will be at this regional. In the regional final, one seed Huskies, three seed Illini. And I have the Huskies moving on to Glendale, Arizona. Who you got in the East? Oh, let's go UConn over Stetson, FAU over Northwestern, San Diego. I'm just trying to get through these things, dead leg. I wouldn't want you to be late for Dan Patrick, you know? San Diego State over UAB, Auburn over Yale. Bruce Pearl invites you into his home. You come back, 
He you did come, not, actually. So we're clear. He never invited me into his home. <laughs> Bruce Pearl invites you into his kitchen. I, and, and, his you, kitchen. and you re, Bruce Pearl invites you into his deep freezer. Okay. And you you, re, you you reward him by coming back and saying, Neville Arena, I don't really see it. And then you pick Yale. And you talk about Janai Broom going to school as if anybody could take Janai Broom to school. Janai Broom takes people to school. He doesn't get taken to school. Okay. Fair Auburn enough. over Yale. Auburn over Yale, BYU over Duquesne, Illinois over Moorhead State, Drake over Washington State. The chat points out if you're the Drake coach and you don't pick Drake, yeah, you could pick McMill. Also, King Push, I agree. King Push, actually probably better pick than McMill. I'll, I'll, I'll let Darren figure that out. Um, Iowa State over South Dakota State. That's TJ Oxelberger, former Jackrabbit, committing Jackrabbit crime in the NCAA tournament. Okay. It's unfortunate. I got UConn over Florida Atlantic, San Diego State over Auburn. Well, now look what I've done to Jani Broom and Bruce Pearl. I apologize. I didn't mean to do that. It's just written in front of me. I'm oh, reading. Yeah. Illinois over BYU. Iowa State over Drake. I got UConn over San Diego State. Illinois over Iowa State. There's my two seed going down. There we go. And then I got UConn over Illinois, just like you. Maybe I'm copying you. You're not, but I uh, but I do like it. All right, let's go down to the West here. West region. You're going to have games in Charlotte, Spokane, Memphis, and Salt Lake City. UNC versus Wagner. Seahawks got it done. That is a Thursday game. Going to be mid-afternoon on CBS. The first game earlier in the day on CBS, 12-15. Our first tip on, on, um, on Thursday of the entire tournament. Mississippi State versus Michigan State. 12-15 CBS. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Bulldogs here. A um, couple of wins over Tennessee. A uh, really tough game. I don't think Michigan State should be a nine seed, but I will not be surprised if Michigan State wins the game. If Michigan State wins the game, doesn't mean this nine seed was validated. I know many Sparty fans are going to be very, very eager to hop on the internet and try and dunk on people. You very well, you probably should win. Let's be honest. You should win this game. I will take the Bulldogs. Uh, could be really, really close, and I like that one a lot. St. Mary's versus uh, Grand Canyon. You know, it doesn't feel like Grand Canyon is as popular, although I'll get those poll results in a few here as a, as a 12 over five, as I thought it might've been, but uh, that's a late tip GP on Friday. That's going to be going to be one of the last games of the first round. I will go Gales. Um, I tried to get Bryce, you know, to, to tell me what he thought about this game. I hit him up. Yep. This is Bryce. And I don't, he care. did not care to talk he, to me. He's not, not he's not even take. He like, he's not, it's, taking it's, it's kind of wild to be taking St. Mary's. <laughs> With such a lack of seriousness. I, I know. I know. I will go Gales. I will go Bama over Charleston. That's a 735 Friday tip. Feels like we're not taking Charleston seriously enough. They're not as good as last year record-wise. Um, Bama has 11 losses in the four seed. That's just as a reminder. There, Those are in Spokane. Uh, down to Memphis. GP's backyard. Yeah. You'll have Clemson as the six and New Mexico as the 11. Before that, you'll have Baylor as the three playing Colgate the 14. This is a 12:40 Friday tip on True TV. How are they going to put Scott True on True TV? What are they doing here? Um, man, this man won a national championship at Baylor and you put him on True TV? That's like Norlander treating that's how Norlander treats Bruce Pearl. Okay. Not to mention Nico Medved. Uh no, congrats to Nico on breaking through. I was happy to I was Oh, happy hey, happy stay on, stay on that side. Okay. Stay on, the, stay, right. on, stay on that side. Me and Nico, me yeah. and Nico and Danny Sprinkle and the rest of the Mountain West, we're mm -hmm. on this side. You stay on that side. Uh, Colgate's won the Patriot League like 17 years in a row. They haven't won a first-round game. I think this is a bad matchup for them. I will have Baylor moving on, and then I will take Lobos, fellow DMB fan Richard Patino, by the way, dropping, dropping me live at Red Rock song references. I couldn't be more impressed. And when I texted him because I was waiting on Rick, Rick, who's not in the field, real one more music thing, he gave me Rick Patino. Creedence Clearwater Revival. But the first time I learned of it was like, hey, I'm, you know, tell your dad to, to get back to me. And as he's telling me DMB, his, his, the exact words on the text were, my dad said CCR, WTF. Like even Richard was like, this is my father's favorite band. So I cornered Rick Patino at the garden. I was like, this is not, it. he's like, no, you don't understand this. It absolutely is. Do you realize in 1969, John Fogarty and them and starts just rolling off Run through the jungle, proud Mary. This is everything. But is it is it CCR? You tell me. Isn't CCR one of the great American bands? Oh yeah, without it, without a doubt. But you like picture Rick Pitino driving in from his you know tremendous home on on one of the great golf courses in America, going into work, and he's and he's. <laughs> 
he's just he's just blasting in American Sun. Like I just. Well, you want him to listen to you want him to be listening. You want Rick Pitino to be driving from the golf course to the Sopranos theme. Instead, it's Proud I Mary. Do. Well, that's what I think. Uh, yeah, but between you know, fortunate son. Who'll stop the rain? Yes. <laughs> bad moon rise, like bad moon rising. Nine a.m. driving in the office. Rick Pitino, that's incredible. Um, Rick, Rick Pitino. Rick Pitino said my players are laterally slow and physically weak, and this is the most unenjoyable experience of my lifetime. And then yeah. he went, he jumped in his car and he played. Who'll stop the rain? Exactly. It's just awesome, man. They are of, a, of his generation, so I get that entirely. Uh, but Richard, DMB fan, dig that. Um, I'm going to take the Lobos to move along. I'll take Baylor to move along. I think Jalen House, Donovan Dent. Jamal Mashburn Jr., just an, uh, just an amazing um, trifecta in, in the backcourt there. Dayton plays against Nevada in the in the 7-10 matchup here in the bottom left of your bracket with the West uh, Flyers. That's going to be a, that's going to be that squeeze on Thursday, that in-between game before late afternoon, and uh, we get to the nighttime stuff. I will go Flyers. Uh, one of, you know, every year, GP, I've got four or five matchups in this first round where I am convinced I'm going to pick it wrong. And this is one of them. Like, I really think Dayton should win the game. I don't think Dayton should be as high as a seven, but it is. I will go Deron Holmes a second to get it done. And then I will take Arizona, uh, Tommy Lloyd coaching against Dan Munson real quick on this. I was on, uh, I was on, uh, our bracket breakdown preview on CBS sports network on Monday with Wally Zerbiak, Brent Stover, your good bud and Chris Walker. And Chris Walker tried to tell me that ha- the committee having Tommy Lloyd coach against Dan Munson, who was at Gonzaga 25 years ago, was the committee just trying to, I was like 25 years ago, he's been gone from Gonzaga. <laughs> you, you ready? 25 you, years, Chris. You ready for this? You ready for this? That had never even entered my head. <laughs> here's, I said something like, here, here, here's the no, and, and people do this with the bracket all the time. I love Seawalk. Seawalk's my guy. All right. You say Stowe's my guy. They're all my guys. I mean, Stowe's my best buddy, but those are all my guys. Here's, here's the truth about a 68 team bracket. People will see things in there and go, ooh, look what they did here. Oh, it's Rick Barnes against Tennessee, against Texas, maybe in the second round. Look what they did here. But do you realize, I learned this a long time ago when I used to do brackets. I used to have bangs. I used to do brackets. Um, It doesn't matter what bracket you put together. There will always be little things in there like that. There's always going to be like, oh, it's Rick Patino against a former Rick Patino assistant in the second round. Maybe that stuff is always, it's always unavoidable. there. It's there's, unavoidable. Yeah, there's too, uh, there's there's too many connections. The, the coaching world is too small. Um, it doesn't matter what the teams that get in every year. I will go Arizona to move along. I'll take Carolina over Mississippi State in a close one. I'll take St. Mary's and have defense win out against Alabama. Give me the Gales to the Sweet 16. Uh, I will. Here's another one. Scott Drew going down second round. Give me the Lobos. Yeah. Yeah. Under seated on the 11 line. The train continues. Let's go. And then Arizona moves along past Dayton, uh, which would be a which would be a fun game. I think if we get it there back up to the top, Carolina versus St. Mary's. I told you. We're going to get spicy, folks. You're going to have some upsets. It's just trying to pick out where they are. Man, this thing is going up in flames. I will go Gales over heels. Gales over heels. Aiden Mahaney has the best game of his career. Matches RJ Davis shot for shot. Gales move along. Arizona over New Mexico. So we have a lot of West Coast here in the West Regionals. Sweet 16 in the Regional Final. And then, yeah, on Sunday night, I had Arizona. I have changed my mind. Because we are getting almost every year, we are getting, what has it been, seven, eight tournaments running now? And like 10 of the past 11, actually got the stats somewhere. Um, We have had a five seed or worse breakthrough to the final four. It keeps happening. There's been seven seeds or worse that have been broken through. St. Mary's is my pick. I got to put one in the field. That's it. So I've got UConn and the Gales in the final four on the left side of the bracket. North Carolina over Wagner. Mississippi State over... Over mi- over Michigan State. I got Grand Canyon over St. Mary's. And I know that I said on this podcast a few weeks ago, if you're looking for a team that's going to be underseeded, it's St. Mary's because they've been playing like a top eight team in the country since before Christmas. And then I forgot, I forgot that I said that up until I remembered that I said that. And by then it was too late. My, I was committed to my bracket. So I've got Grand Canyon over St. Mary's. Alabama over Charleston. New Mexico over Clemson. Baylor over Colgate. Dayton over Nevada. Arizona over Long Beach State. Round of 32. 
North Carolina over Mississippi State. Grand Canyon into the Sweet 16 over Alabama. Baylor over New Mexico, Arizona yeah, yeah. over Dayton. I got North Carolina over Grand Canyon. I got Baylor over Arizona. I have Baylor over North Carolina. I've got Scott Drew back in the Final Four. So I got Drew out in the second Shout round. Shout the Hawk. <laughs> Shout the Hawk. Baylor with that defense. Okay, quick uh, 30 second explanation for why Baylor which has been tremendous on offense, mm -hmm. one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country this season. Uh, they've got they've got real talent, ranked sixth in the in the nation in three-point accuracy, 63rd in defensive efficiency, have dropped two of their past three games. Why Baylor to the four? I have been a believer in the other three number one seeds um, in in the other regions for months. Yep. They've, they've so clearly been better than everybody else in the country. I don't know that all of their ceilings are higher than everybody else's ceilings, but they have been consistently great and a level above everybody else for several months now. So I was going to put Purdue, Houston, and UConn in the final four no matter what. And I know that it likely, you know, upsets and March Madness and blah, blah, blah. But just yes. logically, I was not going to be able to get over that hurdle. Purdue, Houston, UConn in the final. And then I'm just not going to take the fourth number one seed. So I start so – I'm, so I'm limited to the West. Who do I want in the West other than the one seed? And I think Baylor checks the boxes. What do you need to win an uh, – uh, 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 to go to a final four? Um, luck. I mean, you need you need luck. A good team and luck mm -hmm. is probably your best combination. Yeah. That's probably the most important combination. A good team and luck. But if you're looking for other things, do you have a coach who can do it, who's done it before, who has the chops to do it? Baylor clearly does. Scott Drew's a national champion. Do you have experience? Yeah, they've got that. Do you have NBA players? They got at least two projected first round draft picks. Um, do you have got, you got great guards? They got great guards. Yeah, the defense is problematic but if if i'm gonna pick somebody other than the one seed in the west um you know i again baylor checks a lot of boxes i'll take them here's a couple nuggets uh stats about the tournament again this will publish later on wednesday if you want to peek through it and completely overanalyze your bracket like i love to do and frankly before i had to get a bracket out asap i did for years and years a couple things before we get to the right side of the bracket in nine of the past 13 tournaments at least one 13 has beaten a four Keep that in mind. I have that stat I talked about before with low seeds. A five seed or worse has made the NCAA tournament final four every tournament since 2013. Every tournament, the final four since 2013 has had a five seed or worse make the final four. That's why I have St. Mary's. The last time all four one seeds made the Elite Eight, 2009. Last time four one seeds were playing in a regional final. Oh, nine people. Um, let's see. What else? I want to give you a couple more good ones here. Um, don't go all chalk in the first round with one, twos, threes, and fours. There has only happened... The last time it happened was 2017, and the time before that was 2007. Only six times since the tournament expanded have all ones, twos, threes, and fours, excuse me, won their first round game. Not even the first and second round. First round game, ones, twos, threes, and fours. Only happened six times ever, only twice in basically the past two decades there. So just keep that in mind. Again, trying to identify these upsets is very, very hard. Um, I got one more for you. Only two times in the past 26 tournaments have all four two seeds made the Sweet 16. I'm going to repeat that for you people. Only twice in the past 26 NCAA tournaments have all four two seeds made the Sweet 16. Okay? Keep that in mind there. Pick a two seed to lose early. It's going to happen. Last year, it was Marquette and Arizona. Let's move on to the right side of the bracket. Uh, GP, you want to go Midwest or South first? I like I like to go right back to the top. That's what feels natural to me. Let's do it. All right, caddy cornered. Uh, Houston Longwood, this is a Friday game. Going to be late, late tip. Obviously taking the Cougs to move along. Although, uh, I know we got to keep it moving. Let me bring up Kyle. But did you see the Boone tweet that got shared a bit? Hmm. All right, let me bring it up because someone brought it up on... Uh, on college basketball Reddit. Here's here's what we have here. I'm going to read this verbatim real quick. He sent it out. All right. <laughs> a disturbing track, tra uh, bracket trend. Uh, user 530J, it looks like this person. In every tournament since 2021, a top two seed is lost in the first round to a team with a phallic euphemistic name. More of oh, us. Wow. Oh, wow. 2021, Oral Roberts defeated second seed at Ohio State. In 2022, St. Peter's defeated Kentucky. And, of course, last year, Fairleigh Dickinson defeated... Three years in a row, 
And as this poster posts, once this happens, stands twice as a coincidence, three times as a pattern. In 2024, Houston will face Longwood. Oh, no. Will they be the next team to fall victim or victim to this trend? Um, just making sure there's no other one or twos that are facing this situation here. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Peters. <laughs> I mean, I mean. Where is South Carolina? Where are the Gamecocks? Well, they're not. They're not in a one fifteen two to a one sixteen two fifteen matchup. Still, I'd keep my eye on them if I were you. That's a six eleven matchup. We're getting there. I know. I would just keep like, in mind if Houston loses to Longwood, we're officially living in a simulation. I will take Houston to win. Uh, six fifty TNT on on Friday. Nebraska versus Texas A and M. Um, a great music matchup, by the way. Hoiberg gave me Queen. Buzz Williams, last coach I got for this. Doobie Brothers, just dad rock galore. And Queen's not really dad rock, but that is 70s classic rock love. Fred Hoiberg coming out of nowhere. Giving me Queen was just uh, why I love doing that project. That was incredible. I will go with Kese Tominaga to get it done, bringing us uh, a ton of joy, just an awesome player to watch. And Nebraska moves along. Then in Brooklyn, where I will be, the nightcap, a Duke versus Vermont, 413. That's your 710 CBS tip. And then it'll be James Madison, Wisconsin for uh, for 30 minutes after that game concludes. I do have the poll results on our 1215s, by the way. James Madison is your most popular 12 over 5, 41% of the vote. Then McNeese, we'll get to that in a few, at 28%. Grand Canyon, 21%. Yeah, and as I suspected, no one's buying the Blazers to get it done. I will go JMU, Mark Byington, 31 win team. I'll say they win, but this is too popular. Uh, I'm not comfortable with the GP. It's just way too popular, but I'll go JMU. Not going back on the pick and I'll, I'll have Duke to win. Uh, that could be a pretty awesome environment because Duke fans, if they're willing to, to cross the bridge and you know, the, the sidewalk alumni of Manhattan are willing to, you know, venture into Brooklyn, they'll populate that building and plenty of Vermont fans will drive down from, uh, from Burlington and Montpelier shouts to Colchester shouts to Essex junction shouts to Shelburne farms. Shouts to Stratton, shouts to Killington, shouts to Sugarbush. Uh, UVM fans will get down there to the Barclays Center. Looking forward to that. Uh, down in the bottom half of the South region, you've got 60 Texas Tech playing at NC State on CBS. That's going to be about 940 on Thursday night. This feels like it's getting the uh, least amount of attention. Maybe BYU's Duquesne's getting a little less attention there. But NC State comes and rolling. I will go with Grant McCaslin in this game. Um but I've 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 pump fake myself a couple times, but I'll take the Red Raiders. Really good offense. We'll see if NC State can carry it over. As a reminder, teams that come into the tournament scorching hot in conference tournament play, there is absolutely no pattern historically with those teams being able to continue even winning one game. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Kentucky plays Oakland, 7-10 CBS on Thursday. Greg Campy, John Calipari, very, very longtime friends, uh, know each other well. Uh, Calipari's going, by the way. This is back to Pittsburgh, where he's from. That's where these games will be. Um, Moon Township. Shouts to Moon Township. Absolutely, bud. Uh, I'll take Kentucky to get past Oakland. Um, no one talking about that one happening at all. I don't see anyone giving Oakland a shot. Uh, we'll see Campy in his fourth tournament, of course. And then bottom portion here is Florida versus either Boise State or Colorado. I am So this is one of those tricky ones where – I'm going to take Colorado to beat Boise State. Apologies to you and your Broncos shorts, GP. And then I'm taking Colorado to beat Florida. Now, if Boise State beats Colorado, I will take Florida to beat Boise State. But for this show right here, I'm you almost always, every year except one since we've had the first four, a team that has won from the at-large pool in Dayton has gone on to the at least the second round. So my pick this year is the Buffaloes with their talent. And then Marquette, Western Kentucky, that is a Friday tip. Uh, at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, I will give uh, I will give Marquette plenty of leeway in that one and have Marquette moving along. And then I'll push through the bracket here. Give me Houston over the corn. I'll take Duke over the Dukes. But I don't put it out of mind that James Madison might be able to pull this off and actually come out of Brooklyn, get into the Sweet 16. What an amazing story that would be. Again, 31-3 and three team, folks. Um, give me t Kentucky over Texas Tech. And if Texas Tech offense really shows up, then we might have something. I happen to think, famous last words, this pod is a good draw for Kentucky. Um, and then I'll go with, I'm again, this is if Colorado wins. If Colorado beats Boise State, I have the buffs over Marquette. Another two seed going down on the top half of the bracket. Iowa State on one side, Marquette on the other. I do wonder how impactful Kolick will be. Is he going to be 90%, 95%, 70%? 70%? Um, We'll see. Uh, Biggie says three teams in the tournament. We'll see if all three can break through to the second weekend. So I will go with Houston, Duke, Kentucky, 
Colorado in the Sweet 16 in the South. Give me Houston over Duke because of the defense, because of the toughness, because Jamal Shedd's awesome. Uh, but what a matchup that would be. I will go Kentucky over Colorado uh, with its offense and the strength of that. And so like GP, I've got uh, a Kentucky team like Baylor not being elite defensively moving on, but not to the four. Give me Houston has rated as the number one team in the country way more weeks than not. UConn now currently has that perch, but I will go with uh, also because this is in Dallas, uh, Houston getting it in its backyard there. Practically, I will go Cougars to Glendale. Houston over Longwood. The Longwood Longwoods fall to the Cougars. Texas A&M over Nebraska. All right, there we go. That's what I like to hear. Let's have some differences. Let's go. James Madison over Wisconsin. I know you're worried about James Madison because they're popular. Dude, it's, you know, it is the most popular 12 over five in a half decade, man. You know who else is popular? Taylor Swift. <laughs> Would you have any problem picking, picking, picking Taylor Swift to advance? I picked the coach who picked Taylor Swift. That'd be Mark Pope, by the way. See what uh, I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? James Madison and Taylor Swift on the same page. Got it. That's right. That's right. James Madison is the Taylor Swift of this NCAA tournament. You heard it here first. <laughs> Chat's calling my bracket ass, by the way. That's fine. I don't run from it. I don't I don't run from it at all. You have an ass bracket. Keep going. I do. Whatever. Keep we, going. We, we should do an ass bracket. Somebody should put together an ass bracket. I think I'm doing it right now. Duke over Vermont. I don't care how many people come from the little towns in Vermont. It's over for them. It's over. <laughs> it's over for them. Texas Tech over NC State. Kentucky over Oakland. Boise State. I got Boise State over Colorado because I do have some Boise State shorts. I rocked them yesterday. I got I got Boise State over Colorado. Then I got Boise State over Florida. Marquette over Western Kentucky. Round of 32. Houston over Texas A&M. Duke over James Madison. Kentucky over Texas Tech. Marquette over Boise State. Houston over Duke in the Sweet 16. Marquette over Kentucky. And then in the Elite Eight, I've got Houston over Marquette, Jamal Shedd over Tyler Kolick, Kelvin Sampson back in the Final Four. All right, good deal. Let's go down to the uh, let's go down to the bottom here. Midwest got games in Indy, Salt Lake City, Pittsburgh, and Charlotte. Purdue against either Montana State or Grambling State. That game's obviously going to be a first four game getting played on Wednesday night. I'm going to step out on a ledge and say Purdue doesn't get beat by a first four winner, 16 seed, two years in a row. Oh my gosh. If it happens, <laughs> if that happens, Paris, uh, there's, there's no hope for any of us. Um, I will go Utah state TCU. This feels like another one. Like a lot of people taking FAU over Northwestern feels like understandably. So a lot of people on Utah state over TCU, this is nine 55 on Friday. Pretty will be before that on TBS. I will go Danny Sprinkle Prince fan, by the way, Danny Sprinkle. I'll go Danny Sprinkle. Over over Jamie Dixon, who I think gave me Tim McGraw, I think. Um, so music-wise, that's not even close. Uh, I will go Aggies to move along. Gonzaga McNeese, I will say, <laughs> I will, if you, uh, I'm not going to go back through it again. If you did not listen to the Tuesday CBS Sports Network show, and it's in the feed now. Go and listen and check or watch it on YouTube and check Parrish's reaction when I tell him what Will Wade told me. Um, Gonzaga McNeese, I will go Zags here, but second most popular 12 over five on the board. Uh, give me the Bulldogs to get it done, but Shahada Wells and crew with the Cowboys, that is a real team here, and Will Wade is a dangerous man, a dangerous Cowboy. He's an outlaw, but I'll go Gonzaga with Anton Watson having a huge game, and I do have Samford. I've talked about it a few times on a few pods, so I won't uh, belabor the point, but I will I will ride with Samford all the more, uh, which is setting up everyone to pick Samford in Kansas to win. I get how that works. Those games, Salt Lake City. That's your Thursday night window, TBS, by the way. South Carolina, Oregon is going to be 30 minutes after Creighton Akron. This is Thursday afternoon. Creighton Akron is going to tip at 1.30 Thursday on TNT. I like the Blue Jays. I don't happen to think this one's going to be too close. John Gross and the Zips, uh, valiant effort there to get it done. And with the way that they won the MAC with Kent State giving away was uh, was a tough one for, uh, for Kent State. But congrats to the Zips for getting back in. Second time in three years. I will go Gamecocks here. I believe... I had it in my notes. I think I think South Carolina. I'll bring it up real quick here, GP. These games are in Pittsburgh. South Carolina, or is it Oregon? Oregon 6-0 in the first round since 2013, winning by an average of 18.5 points. I think that's going to end. Um, South Carolina, though, has only won once in six times in the first round since 74. Obviously, that one win 
was 2017 under Frank Martin. So historically, the matchup favors Oregon in the context of this season, this bracket. Obviously, it's South Carolina. Bottom two games. These are TNT games out of Charlotte on Thursday, 650. You've got Virginia versus, I mean, excuse me, you do not have Virginia. <laughs> Looking at the bracket, you've got Texas against Colorado State. I will go Longhorns here, but the way Colorado State looked, oh, baby. Um, man, Rams got a really good shot. They looked, and part of it was Virginia T-ball. I get it, but Rams were looking damn good last night. Um, I will go Texas to get it done. Rodney Terry, they they went on the seven line. And then Tennessee, St. Peter's. No one's picking St. Peter's. Again, just like Purdue. If, if St. Peter's does this again to a two seed, it would just be. And it's a different coach now. Shouts to, you know, uh, Where's the peacock noise? That's what I wanted to do. I had it on my sheet. There we go. I don't know if I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna practice before it's time, just in case. You know? just... you 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 stay you stay. I'm gonna put in the practice, and I know what people are thinking. GP, you can put into work, but St. Peter's probably ain't gonna win again. And I say, okay, I hear you, but you you stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Fair enough. Fair enough. I was I I almost forgot the peacock thing. It, it tossed me. I was like, why did I write that on the bracket? Oh yeah, that's right. You got to play the peacock sound. You you stay yeah. ready so you don't have to get ready. I'll have my peacock noises okay. <laughs> ready to go just in case. Bashir Mason and the peacocks uh, will try and take down Tennessee. I do have the Vols here. I will go Purdue over Utah State. That is an unkind second round matchup. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Illinois having to play Loyola Chicago a couple of years back in the in the tournament in that same round in that same part of the bracket too. I will go Gonzaga over Samford. Uh, Ryan Nemhard with the big game. Um, Samford does, you know, maybe maybe could have a charmed run to the Sweet 16. Wouldn't wouldn't shock me with how this tournament's been in recent years. But I'll go with Gonzaga for a ninth straight year, make it the Sweet 16. I will have the Blue Jays over the Gamecocks. Battle of the Birds there. Oh, by the way, uh, give me Creighton. And with Baylor Shireman having an awesome couple of games, I will go Rick Barnes to beat his former school. Give me Tennessee over Texas and Dalton Connect playing up to his reputation. I'll say Dalton Connect first two games in this tournament averages 27 and a half points. And then I will go Purdue over Gonzaga. Give me the Boilermakers into the Elite Eight. Creighton over Tennessee. And then I will, I, this is the second year I've done this and I was a play away from being right last year. I had Purdue on Sunday night. I have changed my pick, folks. I cannot live with myself going 3-1 to the Final Four. I will take Creighton. So I have UConn, Gales, Houston, Creighton, the Final Four. I got Purdue over the Montana State Grambling winner, Utah State over TCU, Gonzaga over McNeese State, Kansas over Sanford, but that could be tricky. South Carolina gets past Oregon, Creighton over Akron, Texas over CSU. I know that makes you happy. I know that makes you thrilled. Tennessee over St. Peter's. I've got Purdue over Utah State, Gonzaga over Kansas. And that is a, a direct result of the, the Kevin McCullough news. I would have had Kansas going to the Sweet 16. Now I do not. Creighton over South Carolina. Tennessee over Texas. Rick Barnes gets his revenge over the school that once fired him. Purdue over Gonzaga. Tennessee over Creighton. Zach Eady, Dalton Connect. Maybe the two players who would have fit, who would finish one and two in a national player of the year race in the Elite Eight Midwest region. I've got Purdue over Tennessee. Boilermakers in the Final Four. For the first time since 1980. Okay, good deal. All right. <laughs> Look at you. Uh, do we have one more break or are we going right through here, bud? I think uh, I think in the spirit of in the, making sure everybody is where they need to be on time, just tell me who you got winning final four games in your national championship. Look at you, bud. Um, I'm going to take UConn over St. Mary's. I like the matchup, just to say it's the least here. Am I out of my mind for St. Mary's real quick? Am I? Am I? No, I told I told you I since before like Christmas, is, yeah. they've been a top eight team in the country since before Christmas. Sort your data at Bart Horvick. Sort your data. Only two losses going back to early December. I feel like this is the most clear pick for a five or worse to make the final four on the board. I just do. Um, I feel like the West could get a little bit nuts. I know UNC is the most disrespected one in terms of it's the least popular one to make the final four. And that's, you know, based on um, CBS bracket picks and the whole deal here, but I will go Gales. And then on the other side, uh, Houston is, I want to say this, I'm going to acknowledge this. I have Houston getting to the title game, beating Creighton. Houston is shorthanded. And I, I was aware of that kind of going through and picking all this. Um, Duke, if it has a really, really good game, can knock out Houston in the Sweet 16. If Kentucky catches fire and actually can play a semblance of defense, but if it really, you know, if Reed Shepard goes 6 to 10 from three-point range, yes, like the, those are very much on the table. But my opinion is that Houston is going to come into this tournament 
more pissed off than any other team after the way it lost against Iowa State and Kelvin Sampson, as best as he can control these matters, will not allow his team to have anything remotely close to what they've displayed in the Big 12 championship game. I will go Houston over Creighton in what could be an outstanding national semi. And I will go UConn over Houston. And for me, this is not a common thing. I We've only had the number one overall seed win this thing three times ever. And it was Florida 07, Kentucky 12, Louisville 13. Uh, you just don't usually get it. I normally don't pick the best team in the bracket. Uh, but I've seen UConn too often not to pick them. I don't know how likely it is. In fact, I think at Torvik GP, I have this as well in my, in my deal here. Houston is the pick at Torvik. Houston's percentage to win the title this year is let's see i think it's 17.6 percent it's ahead it's ahead of yukon according to torvik simulator no 20 excuse me 27.9 last year houston was 17.6 this year houston 27.9 percent to win it all that's ahead of yukon and uh and everyone else in the field so keep that in mind as well but i'll go yukon over houston huskies get it done Tristan Newton, Final Four, Mop. Donovan Klingon has a huge tournament. And Stefan Castle, who's been really, really good, he comes out even more, really shows his stuff and validates his status as a lottery pick. I got UConn over Baylor. I've got Purdue over Houston. National championship game, Purdue and, uh, Purdue and UConn, which would be great because we – it's Zach Eady, Donovan Klingon. It's Braden Smith, um, Tristan Newton. It's – either back-to-back national championships for Dan Hurley in UConn or Matt Painter bouncing back after losing to a 16 and winning a national cha- I tell you one. I'll tell you one thing. If Matt Painter wins a national championship and then starts scoring 40 points in every NCAA tournament game going forward for five straight years, like I'm, I'm down with Purdue pulling up Virginia, but not if we play it out. Oh, yeah? If I got to spend the next five years watching Purdue score 42 points, I'm done with them. I don't think that's on the table. Thank God, because I can't do it anymore. Them dudes went 52 minutes last night without scoring, dead leg. 52 minutes. I am aware. I am all too aware. We got to we got to put Virginia in the rear view. Like I got to hunker down and and just prepare for tonight. 52 I minutes. This game. Get psyched for these games, folks. Come on, let's go. Let's I can go. I can fly from my house to Atlanta quicker than it took Virginia to score. What are we doing? I've I got know, Purdue over true. UConn. I got Purdue winning the national championship. Is it is it partly? Hold on, my- hold on, hold on. I I just want to make sure that I, did I just hear you say you had Purdue winning the national championship? Wow. Look at you. I'm a boy. I'm a I'm a boy. Look at me. And tell, re- me who, tell me who I look like right now. Don't make me answer that. The reason why I'm proud of you for this like a is that you almost always pick the team that you think is best, and that is not the case. I think you believe UConn is better than Purdue. I don't believe that. Okay. You don't, you don't get to tell me what I believe. I no, I, that's I, what you believed. No. I don't know what I believe anymore. I don't, I'm starting to question a lot. I don't know what I believe anymore. Here is what I've all here's what I've here's what I believed. I have believed for much of this season that Purdue had the best body of work. All right. I have believed for this entire season that Purdue was one of the very best teams in the country. I don't know that Purdue is better than UConn or Houston. I do know that it's crazy when people act like it's crazy to think Purdue might be as good as UConn. I think those people are crazy. I do know that. But I don't know that Purdue's the best team in the country. It could be UConn. It could be Houston. They're all three comparable, and they're all three better than anybody else. That's what I believe. And here's what I believe. This is how Dan Hurley looks at the East region and the rest of the field, and this is what he sees. Squirrels. Squirrel. Squirrels. Squirrel person. Squirrels. A squirrel. I think that's a squirrel. That's right. That's right. UConn to the national championship. Let's go. Shouts to Devin Downey. Shouts to Chester, South Carolina. Shouts to Terry M.F. and Teagle. Legend. Huck, Lornell, thank you guys once again for watching, listening to the Iron College Basketball Podcast. If you're not subscribed, please go subscribe anywhere you subscribe to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, more of us than there are of them. That should be reflected in the comments. We'll talk to you again on Thursday night, late, midnight Mate. Eastern. That midnight. Is somewhere in the midnight range, okay? We'll, we'll, Thursday night, we'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we'll make it happen. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Till then, take care. Bye.